Hi. In those seconds of silence, you've already made a whole bunch of choices and decisions about me and how I look and my eyes and everything you see. The fact that there's a little me right there. Um, all of those affect the choices that you've made. And now that I'm speaking and you hear my voice, that then adds to that. So there's other choices that are being made, other decisions that you are kind of coming to because of that. So maybe you can hear that I'm Scottish. Um, I live in the far, far north of Scotland. I'm as far north as you can get on the mainland. And I'm Alex Patience. And I'm here to talk to you about the power of the image and imagery. And for me, that's a really important thing. I think when we create powerful images and use words in a way to shape something that affects people and that tells them something and makes them change their mind about something or think about something in a different way, that is, that is important. That's a, a big part of what, for me, life is about. Um, in that silence, of course, I was also in my head thinking through, well, what am I going to say? And But my voice doesn't sound like the voice that you're hearing, because in my head, I come from the northeast of Scotland, and my native tongue is Doric, and that's how I listen to myself. So in some of what I'm going to tell you today, there will be a little bit of Doric. Um, and for me, Doric is such a powerful way to speak. The words, the, the feelings that it evokes, the, the sense of color and um, understanding of, of, of the world that we live in, in the Northeast. And I come from a Fisher family, so everything for us is about the sea and um, it, it shapes everything about you. So, Growing up in a Fisher family, I had never thought that for me, theater would be a choice, that I would look at making performances, um, especially not as a Doric speaker, because of course that wasn't necessarily respected or thought very much of. Um, and when I was a Bern though, my mum was really a storyteller. And I didn't understand that. And as I've grown older, I've come to understand why, of course, storytelling and theater making was gonna be an option for me because really a lot of how I was brought up had that use of language and emotion to shape stories as cautionary tales, as an understanding of who we are and why we are and how it's important to know the history of where you come from because it shapes who you are and what you leave behind. My mom had a great habit of kind of telling me stories. Um, and I think sometimes they were really just about shaping my experience of the world so that I could understand how to look at people and how to care for people and, and what was a nice way to be like she would come back and there's one story that always sticks with me when she kind of came in and she went, oh, Alex, I was down in the broad gate today and there was this all money. Just an all money. Just sitting on a bench in the broad gate. Nobody with him, just him and I was in. And I didn't look happy. I began by him and nobody took him on, nobody really saying on to him, no much anyway. And then just at his feet, there was this old dog. Just an old manny sitting there on his ear with an old dog. And I would greet. Greet is a good Doric word for weep. I would just weep. And my mom would laugh. And <laughs> I mean, it's so cruel, but I think she would laugh 
because she liked the fact that I was soft hearted enough that she could mock me greet with this story on Alman and Izian. And in working in theater, when you, when you create a piece of theater, you create something that's, that's crafted, that's shaped. And those words that are used in theater have been honed and they've been workshopped and planned so that they will be the best choice of words in the best scene. And the scenes are shaped in the best order to get everything that that playwright and that director and that theater company wants from that experience. And everything that's added to that, the images of um, whatever's used in the scenery, in the, the sound and the audio that's there, the music, the costumes that they've used, everything is shaped to create an experience so that that audience coming together are bonded in seeing something that maybe they would never want to experience themselves, but in seeing it and hearing it in that safe theater space, they are allowed to understand the possibility of how that might feel. So that they, for those moments that they're together, can feel a connection that maybe they would never feel at any other time. Because within theater, you know, race, color, creed, sexuality, none of those things intrinsically matter in that coming together. Now those things obviously change how you interpret what's happening on the stage and how everything is shaped, but the coming together that is an experience that's well worth having. Now for me, I'm a storyteller as well as a theater maker. And for me, a story is a completely different thing from sharing a piece of theater. Like I was creating a piece and um, I was in Canada. I was working with a First Nations woman called Cheryl LaRondel and we were creating a piece called Mother Tongue. And in that, we were sharing our culture, sharing our stories, sharing our songs. Everything was coming together for us to understand one another and what it was to be First Nations Canadian and a Scot. And as part of that, on a Monday, we were telling stories. So Cheryl had done hers and it was my turn. I had decided the story I was going to tell her. Being Fisher, it was about the sea, about experiencing that as a, as a bairn when I was growing up. And I wanted to share that. And I sat down, we had the camera running so we could capture everything that we're, we're, we're sharing. And I started to open my mouth to speak. I got a few words out and then my throat just closed. And I couldn't speak. And I, I, I just wept and grunt. And it took me six Mondays to finally be able to tell Cheryl that story. But when we actually made the piece of theater and it came to that section and that story was told within the, the show, at the end, Cheryl and I made tea and we shared it with the audience and we had a chance to be able to talk to people one-to-one. -one. There was a couple that came up to me who were a Jewish couple who had left their homeland. And they said very quietly, uh, we didn't necessarily understand a lot of what you said in that section about the sea, but, but we come from an area by the sea. And in listening to your story and then listening to how you said it and what was said, it felt like it was our sea. We felt like you were speaking and the story was about us. And that was best compliment that I could have, that I could shape something that was so personal to me. And yet the image created for them felt like it was theirs. My name is Alex Patience. 
I hope I've managed to make a wee connection to you.